Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film Special Edition, where we're covering Tales of the Jedi. We're on episode two, Justice Falls a Young Count, going younger, even younger Qui Gon. And I do love the dynamic of always the Je Master and Apprentice uh, going on diplomatic missions. I could just see that all the time. I just I, I enjoy Qui Gon and Dooku go to save a kidnapped senator's son. They get to the rundown village. It's very impoverished and. Desperate. They find out that it was actually the policies that their own senator who was elected was probably uh, very economically damaging. Maybe there were sanctions, maybe there was, you know, foul play afoot, but whatever was going on, the politics far away from this planet was deeply negatively affecting this planet. So the villagers felt they had no choice but to kidnap the sun. I don't know how, I guess the sun was just chilling there. Don't know why the sun was there, but they got him. Duke and Qui-Gon start to become more sympathetic to the villagers. And then there's a bit of a shootout as the senator arrives with his bodyguards trying to get his son, his son back. The Jedi defend the sun and the villagers. Dooku goes a little rageful. Doesn't care much for corruption, you know, or, or foul play. Qui-Gon tempered him, tempered his temper, and uh, they figured out a resolution. The sun gets in the way, and they all kind of realize what are we doing? You know, let's work things out more amicably. Then they all go and those are separate ways. Villagers are starting to take care of each other more and starting to repair. Senator and the Sun go back to Coruscant, I guess, and the Jedi go back to Coruscant as well. I enjoy the Dooku's episodes more. Uh, again, I just find him a more interesting character. Also, Qui-Gon is my favorite Star Wars character of all time. So that helps. Cool seeing a young Qui-Gon. Because again, I, I remember as a kid, I, I read a book, I forget the name, probably Master and Apprentice or something like that, where it go, goes through all the different generations. I enjoyed the book. Uh, and so, but you know, I'd only ever seen the young Qui-Gon Dooku situation in a book. It was cool to see this on screen. I enjoyed that. That made me feel warm and fuzzy and peachy. Liked young Dooku, the blue curved lightsaber. Enjoyed that. Young Qui-Gon with his awesome stance with his green lightsaber. I enjoyed the ending where they mirror what Qui-Gon says to Obi-Wan in The Phantom Menace. You've been a good apprentice, Obi-Wan. And you're a much wiser man than I am. You're a much wiser man than I, Qui-Gon Jinn. Not only is that kind of wisdom and humility being passed down generation to generation, which is a natural, normal thing, ideally, and, and, and I think it's a healthy thing, um, but it's also kind of that, that mirroring and that, you know, reflecting and that kind of circular kind of thing that George Lucas enjoyed a lot, and he would do that with his movies when you look into how much his movies kind of mirror each other or are inverted with each other or kind of repeat or connected in, in as he calls it, like the kind of poetry, um, which I think people kind of misunderstand that line where it's like poetry, it rhymes because I think they're taking it literally or something. I don't exactly know what people have that issue with the, that, but it's a kind of filmmaking or visual storytelling poetry. It's like poetry, so if they rhyme, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. The films are actually composed uh, along the lines of music, which is that there are many themes going on through the films, and the themes are repeated using different orchestration. You know, I'll tell a story in one way, and then I'll change it and have the same story or the same dialogue used by other characters in other situations, so that you have this sort of recurring theme going on constantly. There's an enormous amount of poetry in the trilogy, and that all comes from George, you know, because he's, you have to set up a situation in which poetry can happen. There's actually a lot of things like that going on that if you were to peel the movies back, there's a lot of symbolism, a lot of motifs, and a lot of concentric circles going. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing that. I enjoyed the Senator's big helmet. Fun, tall helmets. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing the astromech droid with long skinny legs. I also, I also like that the the, uh, the choke the Dooku puts forth on the senator. It's not like throwing him around in the air, like spinning him around or shooting him up into space. The power creep that started to kind of, in my mind, get quite out of hand as Disney kind of took over Star Wars. Power creep meaning just like force abilities just got like too much. You know, kind of just uh, just it took me out of it. Immersion wise, just kind of didn't seem to make sense. Not visually enjoyable. Just kind of put off-putting. But I like that the choke was just, it was choking him. He fell to the ground because he was struggling to breathe. Like the choking kind of used to be. Kind of bringing things back to like a certain force power level that uh, kind of was what it was like with the George Lucas era of Star Wars. It's nice that there was some politics brought back into Star Wars, basically. It felt like they were kind of trying to avoid certain political things when it came to like government corruption, people being ignored or exploited while the wealthy concentrated areas are kind of ignoring or unaware of the issues going on. So I like when they bring back politics like that in Star Wars. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, 
bless me. Things that I was kind of a bit meh on, again, is like the dog, just like looking like a dog, sounding like a dog. I, maybe you could say not everything has to be super alien, but I don't know, kind of nice when it is too. Kind of really brings me into that idea that it's a different, a different world. And it's all humans and dogs. You're like, okay, and they all have guns. They don't sound that blastery or look that different. Then you're just kind of like, okay, this is just this is like Firefly, you know? It seems like the sun is like very easily swayed by the villagers, you know? Which, yeah, maybe he's a very empathic kid. Maybe very uh, wanting to understand other people's plights. I rarely leave the capital. When I do, I spend time off world on Coruscant, not here. How could my father allow this to happen to his people? You don't blame them for abducting you. What choice do they have? But it does also kind of seem like, I don't know, a lot of times if you're from a privileged position, and you get kidnapped, which is not fun, and then you're stuck there in a, in a dirty barn, cold barn, your hands tied, a bunch of people pointing guns at you. I don't know if you'd be, unless it's like some kind of Stockholm Syndrome thing, but it seemed like he wasn't there for long, and he seemed so on their side, which was like, okay, I don't know. All right, but, uh, Everyone was very understanding in that episode. Like the, the villager that betrays the other villagers by telling the senator where they are, where they're hiding. She's just like, yeah, well, yeah, she'd do that. She's starving, she's hungry, you know? Everyone's so understanding. They're just like, yeah, it's chill. I mean, I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd betray any of these people too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm also desperate. So that was a bit like, okay. But again, for pacing, I guess they, they want to make these shorter than even normal show episodes, Clone War show episodes. So they really get down to it. It is just kind of meant to be Kind of a short little snippet of a little bit of an event, you know, a small minor event in the Star Wars history, you know, uh, take a little, just a little snippet, a little smidgen of a, of a thing that happens. So fair enough. That's what they're doing. That's what happened. That's what they're going for and it worked out. Overall, it's a, like the message of realizing that, uh, you know, first of all, it's not so simple as voting someone in and then all your problems will be solved. It's a naive way to look at it because uh, reality is a lot of times that's not, especially if the system at its core has issues that have not been fixed, then doing simple things like voting for a new person is not really going to fix anything. You know, and you get to see they're building up on, on Dooku's issues with the Republic that he is even confused why the Jedi is even seeming to serve more and more. So it brings out a bit of Qui-Gon's character, acting in the moment, acting on the will of the Force, listening to his instincts, his gut, his feelings. Brings out Qui-Gon's character, brings out Dooku's character. Solid, right? That's what you want it to do. Also just the, the messages of the, you don't always see the impacts that say a policy or something that someone does in action. You don't necessarily see all the other ramifications that affects many other people that are just outside of your purview. So it's good to be aware of all the collateral damage and all the things that also get affected down the line. Uh, it, was, it was nice to see Dooku and Qui-Gon be so masterly and apprentice-y. I enjoyed that. It doesn't take a lot, honestly, for me. Respect the characters. Have some creativity, have some fun, be a little magical. All right, that's uh, that's it for uh, for this episode. But uh, what do you guys think? Let me know if you guys have seen it. If you have, let me know uh, what you what you guys think down in the comments. We'll have a discussion. Until next time, that's a wrap. Peace.